Um, so hi everyone, I'm Lena um, Thompson, I'm Account Director for the Job Post and obviously we're delighted to be hosting um, the event today. Um, the Job Post launched these events about um, four and a half years ago um, and started off with a little room um, in HSBC I think um, with just probably about five or six people so it, it's pretty much grown quite a lot um, in that four and a half years and due to the ongoing success we're now running a series of events each year um, across the UK and this year is the first year we're also branching out into Europe. So if anyone wants a trip to Amsterdam, then, um, you know, book your tickets. Um, whilst the events are a significant part of what we do, we've also been um, knee-deep in developing a new crowdsourcing recruitment platform. Um, it's totally unique to the recruitment market, and I thought I'd take the opportunity today um, to tell you a little bit more about it. So most of the individuals in this room are heads of talent, um, heads of resourcing, and we can be no doubt that this market has grown massively over the last um, five or six years. There are now um, thousands of job boards, um, innovative new ways of direct sourcing, new technologies um, to assist you in reducing agency hiring spend and, and do it yourself. Um, it could be assumed that with the growth of this direct sourcing market that the agency market would be in huge decline. Um, but these results, which are recently published from the REC, um, an Office of National Statistics, actually show the opposite. Um, there are currently, well, last year, there were 19,500 recruitment agencies um, in operation in the UK. This figure sits higher than 2009. Um, and last year alone, 1,400 new recruitment businesses set up shop in a fourth consecutive year of growth, and things are predicted to grow further as well. As the economy picks up, the demand for strong candidates is increasing, and as a consequence, there should be an even bigger growth in demand for agency expertise. Um, what's really interesting is this 75% figure, which is um, the amount of agencies that have under 10 specialists working in their business. And this is on the increase as the recruitment industry is becoming more polarised. The majority of these agencies we are actually totally unaware of, um, and they're true specialists in their field and operate um, in a small but niche area. These are agencies that can often be overlooked. They have loyal candidates, um, they can offer real market intelligence, and will often work at more flexible and competitive rates. So how do you as an employer ensure that your prefer preferred supplier list keeps up? Um, how do you keep track of those good, small, niche specialist recruiters and consultants? How can you access the right consultants in the right agency at the right price? which is competitive every time, and how can you effectively manage this growing list? Whilst the number of new technologies are almost overwhelming on the direct sourcing side, like I said, there's thousands and thousands of different places to go, there's been very little development um, in the technology to support the supplier market. Um, and yet it's kind of crying out, really, for some technological efficiency. Um, so in slight contrast to Ken's question, actually, where employer blank brand came top. Um, these are some recent figures from the REC again. Um, and the CIPD, they did a, a joint survey asking what's important to HR and procurement teams um, when they were looking at resource models. And these were the, the kind of top three areas. So attracting the right people to their roles, so obviously the quality of the hire, um, the reduce of cost of recruitment, I mean, we all, we all know that, um, and obviously reduction of time to hire as well. So with a real focus on quality, um, a combination of direct sourcing and efficient supply chains is obviously the real ultimate aim. Um, by talking through the technology solution that we've developed, I hope it will give you a bit of an insight into what kind of technologies are likely to emerge in this marketplace and um, what options you may want to consider for the future of your businesses. So where do, where do we sit into the recruitment market? So you can see from this diagram, um, the top area um, is executive search. This is generally dominated by headhunters, executive search agencies. Um, it's low volume, highly focused, and obviously takes a significant amount of time and resource to recruit. The bottom area, um, it's your blue collar workers, your high volumes, process driven, most certainly direct hiring led. Um, and here you're unlikely to lead, need much agency expertise or pay agency fees to deliver unless, of course, you're looking for temps. The middle grey area is really um, where we're focused, and it's an undoubtedly a, a candidate-driven market. This is where, as an employer, you may require the expertise of specialist recruiters who have strong candidate knowledge and can find you, you know, the talent that, that you can't find yourselves. And this is really why the job post was developed. We wanted to be able to aggregate all specialist suppliers through one contract, 
one platform and immediately max maximise your access to talent. So dependent on the size and nature of the business, the, the job post offers two kind of distinct solutions. Vendor management being the first, um, this is where we would manage um, a client's network of suppliers through one contract, um, alongside our wider network of suppliers, which allows the client to spend more time direct sourcing um, on those roles that are easier to fill, um, and also have more time to manage those key suppliers and nurture those long-term relationships of those who are really worth investing in. And this is an area where some real key benefits and cost savings can be made, both across recruitment and procurement teams, in terms of onboarding and managing suppliers in a consistent way. The second area is supply chain extension, and this is where you could tap into the job post's wider network of specialist suppliers, when you have maybe hard to fill or niche vacancies, or maybe when you've got peaks in recruitment. You post the roles, release them to the market, and only agencies with relevant candidates can submit CVs to your jobs. Through aggregating a wider supplier network, you can gain real market insight um, on suppliers and why they do or don't want to engage on your roles. This can be really useful information to take back into your business. Um, are your roles paying market rate? Are the fees you're paying, are they too low, too high? Um, and are the candidates you're looking for even exist? So going back to kind of what's important to, to HR and procurement professionals, we've tried to focus on what the real benefits to in-house teams would be. So firstly, um, the technology is really fast. Um, you can have immediate access to a wide network of recruiters, and that currently sits at around 45,000 um, registered on our platform, and this is growing every day. Um, only relevant suppliers will access your roles through our commercial model. So we charge suppliers to engage on your job. Um, and this encourages them to work quickly and efficiently to fill your roles, significantly reducing time to hire. And as you can import one set of terms um, and standardised fees, this significantly saves time and money in managing and onboarding suppliers and negotiating fees. Um, and as a consequence, compliance and control are improved along with quality and hire by connecting you with those relevant specialist suppliers um, as and when you need them. So what's totally unique, and I've kind of briefly mentioned it in the previous slide, um, is our commercial model. And this really allows suppliers to pay to engage on roles that they believe they can fill. Um, when faced with a crowded market of recruiters, which we know that there's, there's huge numbers of them, um, how do you find out which ones are really going to be able to fill your role? Uh, the pay-to-play model ensures only suppliers that have relevant candidates are engaged and filters out the rest. So I wanted to go through um, a couple of examples of a few clients that we've been working with just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, the first is a, a large FMCG business. Um, we've been working with them for about a year now. Um, they came to us so they could increase their supply chain for hard to fill positions, but also for those peaks in recruitment where they maybe didn't have enough resource to manage it. Their business have sites all over the UK, and um, historically the site managers have been responsible for their own recruitment. Um, so they were finding many cases of, of those hiring managers kind of hiring out of, out of process. Um, in terms of the results, so the procurement team went through the PSL review and capped their supplier list, which was a, a kind of necessity, really. They then drew up and imported their terms onto the job post, which allowed them to work with a wider array of um, agencies through one set of terms, <laughs> Um, but also meant that they could process those unapproved hires quickly and efficiently. Um, as a result, their unapproved hires have significantly reduced, um, so down to 4%. Um, their time to hire on roles um, has improved, and they've now got time to focus on those real key suppliers who they want to nurture those long-term relationships with that can really help them on their, their volume of vacancies. Um, and, of course, um, free them time to direct source. Um, finally, uh, and what's been a, a huge relief for, for them, um, is the saving of 108 hours of their recruitment time over the last six months, um, and that's by directing cold calls from the suppliers via the job post. The second one um, is an outsourcing business, um, around 50,000 employees. Um, the nature of this business means they have a, a wide array of different roles, locations, peaks and troughs in recruitment, um, and they found they were constantly adding ad hoc agencies to their PSL to support them in their needs. However, the PSL was becoming really out of control and they found 
this was taking a huge amount of rec recruitment time and also procurement time with real kind of little results. Um, they have saved a considerable amount of cost through um, supply chain consolidation, um, and this kind of sits at over 400, 450 hours that they're going to be saving um, by doing this. Um, their placement rates have significantly increased, so now they sit at 72%, whereas on their existing PSL that was 55 um, and again, just like the previous case of their cold call reduction is, is significant, 180 hours. Um, so this is the bit where I've got to click something different. So this is, um, we've been running a project for about a year. It's called Talent Leaders TV. Some of you might or might not have taken part. Um, if you haven't, we'd love you to. Um, and it's really to get um, heads of talent's thoughts on the industry, a bit about what's going on in their business, a bit about what's now and next. Um, and it's been really, really insightful. Um, as we've been developing this technology for in-house teams, we asked some of them what they thought of the job post, and I thought I'd share some of the comments um, that they gave today. The job post is a platform that we've, we've worked with now for the last couple of years, and, and the value it's added to us is its ability for us to engage with suppliers that we didn't know about. Uh, and in simple terms, that saves us a lot of time and hassle to get to those suppliers. I think the job post is a really valuable tool, especially for the smaller recruitment players out there. When we are recruiting very, very specific roles. It provides uh, scale uh, to something I could never scale to do. You could get access to candidates that you might never have, have had. It's a really good way of connecting clients to agency. The really one-on-one -on -one service would give us some confidence that they could really deliver. It acts as a great aggregator for us. Um, it's also a great control point. I think the ability for a organisation, be it a very large organisation such as ours or a very small organisation, to have the ability to post a job somewhere but also then have a large number of recruitment providers review it and then for them to decide if they have the capability to fulfil the proposition. I think the job post is a great channel, um, it's very different. I definitely use them in the future. It's an idea I wish I'd have thought of. What do I think about the job post? Well, you know, maybe crowdsourcing is the next LinkedIn. Who knows? That is possible. So finally, I um, wanted to leave you with the question of whether you think your supply chain is, is fit for the future. Whether you're interested in the job post or other um, new recruitment technologies or not, um, the market is changing and the demands for strong candidates are only being more competitive for employers. Um, are traditional PSLs the way forward? Do they take too much precious time to manage? Um, with a focus on direct hire and reduction of agency hire, you could end up with an imbalance of uh, quantity rather than quality. Um, it's easy to forget the importance of specialist consultants and agencies that are out there um, and their knowledge and expertise in a, in a real candidate-driven market. What's the best balance for your business um, and how can you maximise the potential of your supply chain to make sure that it really is fit for the future? Um, we're running a masterclass um, along with the various other speakers from this morning and we'd be delighted if you could join us and discuss what plans you've got um, to manage your supply chains and maybe what technologies you're looking at for the future. Um, thank you for listening to me today and um, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.